Vale. Bueno, eh, Carlota y Lucía, gracias por estar aquí. ¿Vale? Hago una pequeña presentación para los que aún no sepan quién, quién, qué despacho es cierto estudio. Así todos nos ponemos un poco en, en, en orden. Cierto Estudio es un equipo de seis jóvenes arquitectas que trabaja en una amplia variedad de proyectos, desde vivienda colectiva, urbanismo, diseño de mobiliario, etcétera, etcétera. Eh, nacen con una idea de pensamiento colectivo que buscan un carácter único y innovador en su arquitectura. Con sede en Barcelona, el estudio fue fundado en el 2014 por Marta Benedito, eh, Yvette Gasol, Carlota de Gisper, Ana Long, Lucía Millet y Clara Vidal. Todas ellas estudiaron juntas arquitectura en el ESAP de Barcelona. Han encontrado en los concursos públicos su principal campo de investigación y experimentación. Han ganado con su primer concurso que ganaron fue con el concurso internacional de Illa Las Glorias en Barcelona, un plan director para un conjunto de viviendas sociales cuyos edificios están, están siendo desarrollados por cierto estudio y otros tres despachos de arquitectura. Y últimamente han ganado también otro concurso para un bloque de viviendas en Masnow, de 70 viviendas en Masnow. El proyecto se llama Kitch Room, eh, para que lo sepáis. ¿no? Aparte de esto, eh, también cierto estudio ha sido reconocido con dos premios a Jack en las categorías de proyecto sin construir y diseño de producto. También ha colaborado con la revista Neon Design en el apartado de arquitectura y diseño. Han impartido conferencias y charlas en el ESAP, la SAI, la BAU. Eh, su trabajo ha sido publicado también en Cuestiones Habitacha, Neo2, Ginza Magazine, entre otros. Y actualmente también han hecho de colaboración en, en, recientemente en la Universidad Tuxrats, decirme si lo digo bien, en Austria, en el verano del 2022. Y han sido seleccionadas como finalistas en los premios FAD del 2020 en el diseño de interiores con el proyecto Casa Cruce. Vienen aquí un poco a explicarnos su investigación sobre las necesidades sociales y arquitectónicas de la vivienda actual. Con su conferencia eh, La Casa Reversible o la Vivienda Reversible, Carlota de Gisper y Lucía Millet son dos de las seis cofundadoras de cierto estudio que darán la conferencia de hoy. Y ahora sí que doy paso para que ellas os hagan la conferencia. Gracias por todo. Good morning. Thank you, thank you all of you. Thank you, Joan and, and Laia, for the invitation. And also Pedro, we are very happy to be here. And now I will, I will share the screen so you have the presentation. Okay. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So um, today we would like to explain you what's a, a reversible home for us, what's, what's the meaning of this concept. Um, in the studio we, are, we want to give uh, social answers to the, to the needs we, we see nowadays. No? We think that the dwellings should allow a wide range of, of different ways of living and we think that the, the dwellings in this, the typologies we, we're looking for should adapt to these, to these changes and should allow different families to, to be in. Okay. We thought uh, about uh, five key concepts which are very important for us and which will explain this through this lecture. Um, we will talk about X rooms, about perspectives, Then Lucia will introduce us to kitchen room, filter space, and urban community. The first concept is called X rooms, and it's probably one of the most important for us. It's the result of a, of a reflection about how society has changed in the last century and how we have passed from, we left behind no, the traditional family, and we are in a more open uh, cohabitation roles of nowadays. And that's why we think that the, that the um, sorry, uh, that's why we think that the, the 
the, the new house, no, the, the old house, sorry, it's too rigid to be, to be valid for today. The, the old um, living room, the closed kitchen, the three bedrooms, the small one for the kids and, and the long corridor as well. It's, it's, not, it's a model that it's not valid for today. We think that um, this is a dysfunctional uh, dwelling and it also, it's a big obstacle in front of gender equality. So that's why we, we, we want to pass to a new no, modern dwelling in a way with non-hierarchical rooms, rooms that are ambiguous enough to hold any program possible. And, and so that the user can define the distribution of the house. So uh, um, in a way, ideal house where not everything is predeterminated. So not only this, but it can also be changed through his life. That's the, the concept. And we think that the best, um, the best tool to, to find this is the grid. So we came up with, a, with a different kinds of grid and we kind of uh, organize them here. So you, you, you know what we are talking about. We will talk about regular grid, about the slided one, join it, multi-sided grid, and last one, the cellular grid. Now, um, the first one might seem, uh, at first sight, the most simple one, but I think its simplicity makes you find the best proportion of the room, so that fits both the site and, and the program. I will explain one of our latest competitions we did for Ibabi in Mallorca. It's called and Giuseppe Namarta. Here we display um, a typology with uh, four identical rooms. When you have the kitchen, then the living room and the two bedrooms, which are connected through sliding doors in the corner they share. We also add a, a thick uh, band above with the access, the bathroom and the laundry room. So sometimes the biggest complexity is to solve the aggregation plan. It's when you have to place these units in a, in a, in a plan, when you have to match the site, of course. Here, in this case, we thought about uh, two exterior corridors, which uh, gave access to four and three uh, dwellings. This movement no, in, in, in the interior uh, courtyard made made this vibration and it also gets more powerful when the unit loses one room and becomes one bedroom apartment here in the corner to give a more, more light and to give more, no, a more corner, more open corner. The next one, it's called it slider. That means uh, the, 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 they're not aligned in a way, so you have a movement, a slide of the, of the room. This gives multiple connections and long visual relations inside the house. We think that the best um, example to explain this grid is the project we call The Sleep. We did also for Ibabi in 2018 in Ibiza. The, the engine name means exactly this. The Sleep in Spanish means slide. So here we place a um, non-hierarchical rooms where the user could define the, the use. It can also have an aggregation of units. No, you can add one extra room to get a two bedroom apartment or even a third room to get a three bedroom apartments. So this, this grid of, of rooms were uh, surrounded by a perimeter that uh, that was double, you had the perimeter inside and outside the building with the humid spaces and also with uh, galleries no, and bathrooms, laundry rooms. But the, the point here was that we had to follow the urban regulations. So this aggregation plan had to have a, 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 an aligned facade. That's why we, we thought, and also to, to place the staircase, that's why the unit, the had no, the half of it and became a, a one and a half unit to, to give this alignment a solution. And that's why we have a pure rectangular block in, in this case. The next one, it's called joining. Mm, here you have an extra room 
that it's called joint or rotula, as we say in Spanish, that organizes the other rooms. It's also usually in a small, smaller scale. Here you have a, a good example. Uh, it's the competition we did for Solvia, Ciclo Habitacional, in 2015, in the uh, competition called Bienvenido a Casa. Um, here the typology was very simple. It was um, four rooms which were organized in Svastika. And you had, no, they create an interior joint, the disjunction point, which is the, 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 the connection point, we call it. Um, this gives you uh, maybe a, a rigid, not at first sight, a rigid and, and very homogeneous uh, typology, but, but it gave you a lot of freedom as well, because it was very ideal, this project. We kind of thought that it, you could change everything, even the position of the bathrooms or the kitchens, because that was possible because we placed these thick walls where you can have all the supplies and all the storage. So you liberated the interior no, space of the rooms. That was, that was the main goal of, of this competition. And no, you didn't also uh, only adapt to the, to, the, to the cycle of life of the inhabitants, but you could also increase or decrease by added rooms. No? You connect through a door and you get, uh, or you could lose a room if you, do the, if you don't need it anymore. For example, here are many, many studies we did with different families. You lose a room, you can even have the minimum expression, and, or you can add as, as, as many rooms as, as you need it. That was the, the, the main idea. And in the second phase of this competition, we had to deliver a model where we had to imagine, even though it was an imaginary site, we imagine a, a real building with, with all the connections and the multiple possibilities this, this grid no, gave us in this, in, this, in this model. The next one, it's called multi-sided. So that, that's when we, we went further on doing competitions and we naturally the, developed the geometry of the, of the rooms. In this case, we decided to add more sides to one specific room, which is usually placed in the center. No? And that's why we call it multi-sided. Um, the example we wanted to talk about you is a competition we did for Incasol in Igualada in 2019 called La Habitación del Mitz, where we placed a dining room no? in this multi-sided central space. And you had above and below two squares, two, uh, two rectangular uh, uh, units, which were bathroom and gallery. And around, you also have four similar but not identical uh, rooms. So um, we wanted to seek for very, very simple typology in this case, because we knew that the, the organization who called, held the, the competition was in Casol and it was very classical. So we wanted to convince them that it was very simple that you could actually build this and it was not impossible. Um, we didn't win, unfortunately, even though we are very proud of this, of this uh, competition. And also, no, this simplicity, we wanted to, to look at in the aggregation plan. Here in the diagram, you can understand how these units, how they combine no, through rotation and symmetry, you get the, the typological plan. So um, I want to say that this is, a, this is always a, a path no, that you go back and forth all the time in the design process. You, you, you always have to go back and to change the, the limits and the units and the sizes to match the side, of course, which is very important, and also to to, to get not to get the, the unit you need in the in the in a specific side. And the last one, it's called cellular. It's probably the most difficult, I think, no, at first sight, you think it's very complex. Um, you have very no many polyhedral shapes, sometimes are more regular, sometimes more irregular. Um, it's it's a it's a no, it's a grid of rooms with multi-sided rooms, no? like in the, in the one I explained to you before. 
we know it's rarely to find a competition that wins with this kind of, of grid. Um, but uh, we think it's worth it. So uh, we are keeping in exploring the many connections you can get and the, and the many different visuals that it, it can offer to a, to a typology. This is the example I wanted to, to explain you in, in the cellular grid. It's called Bambinguja al Sud, a competition we did for himself in 2018. In this case, I wanted to show you first the aggregation plan because the objective was to find, to, to even to, to banish the boundaries between the, 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 the houses, even though we mark them in black so that the jury, they don't get lost in this, in this, no, in this mess of rooms. We, it can seem arbitrary, but it's also very rigid and it's, it's put it there because of a reason. That's why I will explain you why. No, you have four very, very similar uh, typologies of three bedrooms and two in the middle of two bedrooms. Um, here, um, we wanted to establish a, a, a method which was, which could organize the plan. Very, very simple. So you could understand and, and, and don't get lost no, in this, in this, in these rooms. Here you have this sequence of rooms. You enter in the, in the gallery, then you have the kitchen, bathroom, and sometimes can be a terrace or other times can be a room. This, this uh, set of rooms, it's always there in every typology. So you have no, this uh, six sequence. And the other sequence that can, all, can organize the plan as well is this other diagonal, which only appear in the three bedroom apartment, that you have these uh, rooms connected with this, uh, with this with, it has the same shape, but it can change, no? That, that was the idea that the users can define the program they want in this, in this sequence. And here, if you, we do zoom in the typology, you will understand no, why it was interesting for us. You can see this sequence, the long diagonals. And also you can see that the, the, almost all of the rooms have more than one door. Even the bathroom has one door, has two doors. So you can connect and, and, and go all around without the need of, of any corridor. That was something we, we were looking for. Then I will explain you perspective, which is probably the most difficult uh, idea to explain and, and to organize. But I think it was important to, to tell you that it's something we, you have to bear in mind when you design no? the, the, all the perspectives you want to, to, to accomplish and how these visual connections, they help, the, they enrich the life of the inhabitants and also it can change the perception of how you live a space. No, it can even change the, the way you, you feel this space. Okay, we thought about three uh, categories in, in, in this perspective concept. The first one is called diagonal. Then we have uh, porosity. And the last one, we call it framed. Here you have three examples of, of these, of these uh, ideas, no? the, the an enfilade in, in a Versailles uh, palace, then a, a, a detail of a house of Dominioni, and then the Malaparte house. The first one, no? the diagonal, it's, it's an special idea which is very, very important in our projects. Um, it gives you a strong connection between rooms, but not only this, it also creates no, very, very, uh, very long visuals, which are very good in, in social housing. When we are doing social housing, it's something we, we use a lot because the sizes are so small that this enlarges the, the house. No? It gives you a sense of, 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 of big space. Um, I will explain you two competitions with long diagonals. The first one is uh, Soul Kitchen with it in Imsol. I for him in, in Gaba. Um, here you have a multi-sided kitchen in the center that organizes you know, four rooms around. The first diagonal appears 
when you place the terrace and, it, and this gives you a, a direction to one side and also when you add an extra room then you have you no know, even more a, a longer diagonal in this in this typology here you can see uh, what i mean and then you have an a, an image that can show you the the long diagonal here in this in this uh, render you can see the the kitchen and all the all the connections no you can you can get in in the typology the next one is uh, la comunidad habitacional a competition we did uh, for imap we won in in 2016 in plaza las glorias um in this in the typology of, of three bedroom we added no one room and we needed a, a, a joint no in a very small scale which was also an exterior space a private one and this uh, gallery no it was um it was doing like, like very powerful the, the diagonal no because you had the connection between kitchen then the joint no or the rotula here with the bathroom and a small uh, corridor and then the the final the final gallery actually we did a drawing for the competition which was uh, explaining exactly this this these long views you could get when you place the the you know, the rooms in a in a certain way well you can see no from the from the terrace you through the kitchen and then the bathroom the the living room and then finally the gallery Then the second concept called uh, porosity, I will explain you by this uh, house with it in Las Planas, it's called Casa Placido. It's a refurbishment of a, of a very, very tiny house, which was almost a ruin. Um, we thought that the, 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 you know, the original site, the, the distribution, was very simple, but in a way it was it was matching good what they needed, even though it, there were so small rooms which they they couldn't need. We we also saw that there was two phases. You had this um, gable roof um, space with with this shape, and also and in a second phase you had the other rooms added. That's why was something we wanted to keep this this centrality of this big space here but the main idea was also to to make visual connections in in many in many possible ways so in a way the rooms of the the limits of the rooms were very undefined so you have in some unexpected corners some views that you you were not no you were not thinking about for example here you see the some images of the project and here you can see that sometimes even the furniture they cross no through the through the space through the rooms and the last one it's called frame um it's an exp a very special uh, project that we are actually doing no it's it's currently under construction it's very special because it's our first house we are doing, and also because it's uh, from Lucia's family. So actually, she's going into in two days. She's going to the site to to Menorca. And um, here, the amazing site uh, we are on. Uh, it was something that affects you a, a lot in the design process. So the constant seek of of these best views, we came up with three main directions, which were the ones that organize the plan. So we were seeking, no? sometimes looking towards the sea here. Then you have the cross view and also the, the vertical uh, direction. So sometimes you, were, you wanted to look through a, a specific tree or towards the sea. And also inside the house, you had several connections between, between rooms. This is some, some pictures of the, of the site, which is now under construction. Okay, now Lupia explains you the, the rest. 
Yeah, so I'm going to explain uh, the, the, the next three, three themes, let's say, uh, which is, the first one is uh, kit room. Um, this is a, a very special point for us also in the studio, just like X rooms is one of our main, um, main goals in, in our proposals for housing. And kit room is also a concept we've been working on for a long time. Um, first idea is how come the kitchen doesn't deserve the name of room in its name, right? How come we have living room, we have dining room, we have bedroom, but then comes kitchen. And it sometimes has lost this quality of deserving the name of room, right? And that's how we came up with this kitchen room concept. If we have a look at the past, um, we, we can see how this kitchen place has been seen very differently in the house. Um, long time ago, it was all seen as a server space of the house, meaning that it was, a, it was a room in the house that was supposed to be serving to the rest of the rooms. This meant that it hadn't had the, the right to have the light quality or space quality or of other open rooms in the house. And it's also important that somehow it was occupied even by the servant. So somehow it didn't deserve the right to become a proper room. If we go further on, way further on history, uh, first time we see this, this kitchen to be opened to the house comes with the, with the American kitchen, we call it here. Actually, when we say an American kitchen, it means like open kitchen. Um, but how come this kitchen opened? Um, at that moment, there was um, like the electrical household appliance revolution, which in Spanish is like la revolución del electrodoméstico. It's something very technical, and, but somehow showing off this, this household appliance was uh, something to be proud of in the house. So somehow it was like a social status reason to show out these kitchens to, to the public or to the guests. Uh, at the same time, the, the main user of this space became the housewife. It's again, uh, a gender qualified uh, figure uh, that, no, that was in charge of this space. Like you see in this classical, uh, it looks like a, American advertisement uh, 60s picture uh, that you clearly see who is the person not taking care of this space. Nowadays, um, we believe that kitchen space uh, deserves a much more open and even social quality since of course its users, uh, it's no longer a gender, um, there's no a gender condition for this user anymore is actually just the person who is living in the house, whomever it is, is gonna use this space. And somehow, since it deserved to be open and to be shown, you start asking more things to this space. And that's when we're saying, is it the kitchen just a place to cook? What do we ask for kitchens? And that's what we're gonna to try to show with our projects. Uh, with this first concept, the house chamber, we meant to say that kitchen deserves this room name, right? So in this project that Carlota has already showed, La Habitación de Mitch, it's hard for you to find where does the kitchen, uh, where is the kitchen place in the house plan, right? It deserves the same, the same importance as uh, the living room, the bedrooms, or any other room in the house. So somehow you lose this server and servant space quality, and it becomes a unhierarchical space, like Carlota was explaining with the whole each room concept. Also, we want to, to in this part of kit rooms, I want to explain in the beginning, we're gonna show um, some projects of competitions like we've been doing, but also we want to show you some refurbishments we've been also building in the studio where we have had the chance to build these ideas and really experiment them for real in, in, in the projects. And that's why it's good to, to find this double condition of um, 
competitions of, of uh, collective housing and uh, private house uh, refurbishments. This first one is Casa Cruce. It's a refurbishment in a, in a modernist flat in Barcelona. And the whole intervention was to, as you see in the ground floor, you can see how the, the, the divisions in the house were multiple, but what we did was to open them and somehow divide this new space into four main rooms. These four rooms are equally related in between them. And one of these rooms, of course, is the kitchen. Um, here are some pictures of the, of the results of this refurbishment. Uh, and you can see we had to do a structural intervention to open up these relationships so that we could bring light in to the kitchen because of course we couldn't move the installation and part of it, but somehow you, you bring light into it again and you open it uh, to the rest of the, of the house. And, so, and also in this, in this project, we had the chance to design the furniture as well. And what's, what's in, what we did in the project was to design um, bookshelves, but also the kitchen. And also um, you're gonna see we have a, there's also a vinyl uh, shelf um, furniture piece. And they're all designed with the same um, system of, of and materials. So really the, the kitchen has become one more furniture in the house and it, it is accepted in the common areas of the house just as any other, just as any other piece. The next concept uh, about kitchen room is what I was saying before, a room to cook. Is, is a kitchen just a room to cook? And when we think about it, what we ask the kitchens now, um, of course, we tend, up, tend to have smaller apartments, a smaller surface for the house, and we tend to ask more things to these rooms that we, we need them to, to do, right? And in this case, in this project, Kitchen Room actually was the title of the competition where we came out with this concept. Uh, in Masno, it's the one we, the last competition we actually won, and we're working on it. Uh, the kitchen plan, it's actually what organizes the whole floor plan of the housing. So it not only becomes one more room, but it becomes the limelight of the project. It becomes this central uh, room where many other things happen. Uh, this uh, condition uh, somehow happens when this, this kitchen room swallows a new element in it, which is a great artifact for life, which is just a very generous big table. This, this table inside the kitchen space uh, gives it a new quality where it becomes a place to work, to meet with people, to, um, I don't know, I can imagine doing homework here for a kid. I mean, this big horizontal surface gives the chance to gather around it. And it also liberates the space so we can use it as a circulation space. So it's a room that connects other rooms. As we show in this axonometry, um, this central piece of the kitchen room is articulating the entrance and how we cross uh, to the other rooms uh, in the house. And it, and it put, gives potential to this diagonal Carlota was explaining that we also work a lot in the studio giving this diagonal view through the kitchen, especially. And also by, by putting it in the center of the house, we were also concerned about how does it get natural light. And this uh, multi-sided connection gives us the chance to open big connections to the facades in the front and also to the corridor. So it's actually a piece in the center, but that receives light from both sides. This is a render image from this how we imagine this, this place. And, and as I was saying, how, how does it get light from the facade? The next project is um, Casa Placido. You've just seen it as well. So I'm just gonna center on this kitchen room concept. As Carlota was saying uh, in, this, in this refurbishment, the kitchen room uh, somehow conquers the center of the house and it conquers this, the oldest part that was built in this house, which is this um, gable roof. 
and and as you will see in this in these pictures that we took from the from the kitchen actually the, the owner is a photographer so he took the pictures and you can see how the kitchen is like the main is the biggest furniture in the whole house and it's the biggest space and it's where they gather with friends where they cook where they work uh, and it became really the heart of the house the next concept about kitchens it's we call it insular which means we try to say like an island that you can swim around so this concept gives us a chance to circulate around the kitchen so it becomes like a really like the roundabout of the house uh, in this refurbishment we call it Bendelana uh, of a flat in Barcelona uh, you can see how the kitchen really is became the center of the house and and how all the all the rooms kind of gather around it. I'm going to show some pictures of it as well because we also think that it has the chance to get a great personality in the house. And even here, no, it gets the Verde Lara name of the of the whole project. I'm going to pass through a couple so you can see this concept how it works in the space. Um, so I'm not going to stop by in any in all of them, but this is another one is La Galaxia uh, because it looks like a Star Wars uh, that's going to fly off the of the house. But again, this this furniture piece in the middle that gives the chance to go around it. And in this house, it's so small that they even use it as a table uh, to eat at the same time where is the table where you where you cook. Um, also, Peninsula in Santaló in Barcelona as well. Uh, the whole refurbishment of the house was about to. Here comes a great corridor, and we kind of exploded the, the interior of the kitchen so that it invaded the rest of the of the apartment and it created a new circulation around it. Uh, so you could really, um, oops, so you could uh, go around it and, and surround the house. These are some pictures of, of this, even as I was saying before, this new geometry and even the color that gives personality to the house. So it has the right to, to be a, like a main piece you know, in, the, in the project. Uh, the next concept, and I'm gonna make a, a jump here, it's, a, we, call, we call it filter space. Uh, this is an, another like of the main ingredients that we use to, to work in housing proposals. This filter space, um, we're talking about how do we relate with the outside? Uh, maybe it's an urban outside, maybe it's more natural. And also how these filter spaces are also a, a matter of intimacy and privacy uh, in the house. So, they have this double function that we that we work on. And so going for the for this um, concept idea, um, if we take a look at vernacular architecture, you now in the beginning when we didn't have uh, so many technical developments, we had to uh, adapt ourselves and our houses to the climate by using passive systems such as porches, um, facade regulations, uh, without using any mechanical or electrical equipment. And this kind of architecture uh, gave a very um, adapted to the, to the climate without any technical help. Later on, of course, it came uh, the development of many equipments that had got attached to the houses. Even in this in this image, we see how it invaded totally these these facades, and it gave us a, the the, con, the interior condition we're looking for without any effort on the outside, without any effort on these vernacular uh, techniques that were used to to do that same function. Nowadays, it's obvious that we have learned that resources are limited and we cannot. Um, put all the effort just on the equipment. But if we mix up this passive, um, um, see this passive uh, vernacular architecture to reduce 
uh, energy demand, and then we add, of course, the technical developments that we have, we can achieve uh, great uh, architectural conditions for housing. Um, I have to say in this in in these terms that we always collaborate with other um, architects or other teams, especially, for example, Societat, Societat Organica, uh, to work with them in the competition so that we achieve like great um, strategies in this sense, right? So it's not only us, it's also mm -hmm. that we, we look for people who, who innovate and, and have great ideas on this. Um, so I'm gonna talk about two scales of filter space strategies. The first one is gonna be for building scale, and then we're gonna go in a little bit more for the housing scale. Uh, this, piece, this first uh, building scale strategy is uh, in an atrium. Um, this project Carlota has shown you also about this cellular plan. Um, we did uh, also a great strategy here to uh, void uh, the south part of this building so that we could gather the south, that we could get the south light right to the center of the house. So every house in the block had direct south light. That was like something we wanted to achieve. And this, and this uh, decision uh, ended up in this uh, global atrium of the building that gets this filter, like big scale filter space, which is the roof and the facade that gathers this common space uh, where you access the houses and it becomes this intermediate temperature space uh, that, that connects all the houses. And of course that improves uh, passively uh, the, the temperature control of the, of the building. This would be like the, the render we worked on as a, this time you know how it even invaded the facade. So this, um, this filter, um, was so important that it came even out on the on the on the facade of the building. Another strategy, it's I mean it's very special for our for our climate, the Mediterranean climate, it's the thermal damper because sometimes in summertime it's very hot, we want to keep away from, from the sun, but then in wintertime we need to, to get the, the sun energy. So in this project for, for Ibabi in Panama Mallorca, uh, we worked on the on both facades of the building. So on the north facades, uh, where we place the uh, the corridors and the staircases, uh, we also placed place, like you see in the diagram here these cooler rooms uh, that could be used to cool uh, the the building uh, from the north facade. And then on the south facade, uh, we also placed we separated this skin from the facade, so you get this. Um, filter space in the south, where you must regulate uh, the sun, the sun, um, the sunlight uh, with this with this facade. You're going to see now in the in the images. So by placing these balconies, but with added uh, passive technology to them, uh, you can regulate the interior temperature as well, uh, especially in summer times, and even enjoy an exterior space with no sunlight directly to it during the worst summer days. Also in this kind of um, strategies, it's very important to take in care of the constructive details and the materials with which you're building this, uh, this, build, this project. Uh, in this case, uh, we proposed um, Mares, Piedra de Mares, it's a stone, very typical stone from Mallorca for the walls constructions. So it's a structural uh, in vertical direction. And then we use a wood um, structure for the horizontal uh, plans. So in uh, mixing both materials, we, we got uh, the, the inner temperature conditions that we were looking for. Another concept of the filter space, as I was saying, is this privacy filter um, that is very important in, in when we design common housing and how does the house relate to the communitary space. In this case, if we're looking 
uh, in the house, we have this uh, first space uh, that somehow is connected still to the corridor, but at the same time, it starts to be a private space of the house. And it's the first filter to come in. And then later, if you go to the other side, to the facade of the, of the building, we find this other filter space, which even comes inside the house. So it is part of the house. It's not a balcony that's, uh, that's outside the house, but it's like a loggia um, that relates the kitchen to the outside and that also filtrates our relationship with the, with the exterior. This is a, a render view of this, of this loggia space in the facade. Um, and this is the project we call Trapezi. Trapezi, actually, I think, I think we've seen it already. The next one is how to inhabit a terrace. Um, terraces are like great spaces in, in a Mediterranean climate, but also they're very aggressive because of the sun and thermal conditions. And in this project that we built in Barcelona, we had this great huge terrace uh, to work on and to find different strategies to occupy and leave this terrace. So here you're gonna find a, a warehouse that connects the, the interior house, sorry, uh, with the exterior. And then you can, you're gonna have a porch. Uh, we also had a fountain with water. Uh, we also had a pergola. And of course, and above all, uh, plants and, and nature that gives thermal uh, and also views uh, to the terrace. So we're going to go through a couple of pictures as well, uh, where you see uh, the effect of these spaces. This is the, the outside porch looking into the warehouse. And here you have this double view you know, of the, from the outside to the inside and from the inside to the outside. Just like here as well, where you see how, how this threshold between the interior of the house and the exterior uh, happens. And finally, this, this last part of the, of the igloo um, cupola that is now being, which is the, what we wanted to have but in here in the pictures, you can still not see that, that uh, the vegetation is getting up and really conquering this structure. So it gives a really like, thermal and, and beautiful space to, to be. And finally, uh, we wanted to talk about the gallery spaces, the gallery rooms. Uh, these rooms must have uh, two different layers of, of glass that we can control by opening and closing depending on the temperature we want to achieve. These spaces are very interesting when they become large enough to hold on activities in. So it's not only a very thin gallery, but when you widen up these spaces and they can be used in the house for, for eating, for maybe it's your studio, then they become very interesting spaces. So we work on these kind of, of spaces in, in many projects. I'm gonna show a couple of, of these competitions, like the Shell and Mitch, you've seen the plan already. And uh, this other Habitades al Centra in Mongat, uh, well, this piece is also this, this filter space that always becomes a very important, important piece inside the house. And as an experiment of this, of this kind of spaces, we wanted to show our studio plan. This is our, the studio where we are right now. It's, um, we designed this with our uh, friend, Pau Vidal, he's also an architect. And we got this 300 square meter industrial plan with just pillars in it. And we organize it so we could have three studios inside and uh, sharing, you come in through this, to this door and we share some common spaces. But then we added these pieces um, that were these filter pieces that I'm talking about uh, that design the relationship between these three, um, between these three studios. Uh, so when we access the, I'm going to show some pictures here. Wait, I didn't explain this last filter. This is a, it's actually an existing space in the, in the building. We didn't design it, but it's there already. Uh, it's, um, you know, these staircases, these metal staircases on the facades of, of some industrial buildings, 
that really become, people have conquered these spaces with plants in the whole building. So it became another filter space. So like uh, every studio has direct connection to one of these spaces. So this is the one who, that divides the entrance of the three studios. And then this other one that reaches the facade and becomes a gallery is the one that uh, our studio, which is this one here, is sharing with Pau. And it became our meeting room or our conference room today dining or room. dining room because we always uh, have lunch here uh, all together. So it became, it's like a very, very important space in the studio. I'm gonna show a couple of pictures. They're not great pictures, but they wanna, they're showing somehow this, this intervention of these glass uh, filters. So this is the view you have when you come in and you find the, the common space, the kitchen is right here, you cannot see, and this is always full of bikes. And then you come through this central space with a pillar in it in, in the middle. And each one of us has its own door to get into the studio. And then these are some pictures of the gallery seen from, from our studio. And in that picture on the right, it was being used for a, for a meeting with students from grad, actually, when they came uh, to visit Barcelona. The last concept um, that's uh, very important for us, it's the urban community. Uh, we introduce this concept in two ways, the urban relationship between the building and the housing, and also the relationship in between the community and the building. I don't know, is, should I go quite fast through it or what? I don't know, see, no, it's fine. So uh, the first one about urbanity, um, housing buildings are one of the main ingredients in the urban fabric. So we strongly believe that they have the responsibility to get involved in urbanism and to create relationships in the city. So if we look, uh, if we have a look at the past, what has happened in the street, that's where we meet the ground, no? where buildings meet the ground, um, if we go to the medieval street where we, we have, we find this place where great and many activities were happening because people, uh, I mean, fully, they had uh, merchants in the street, they used it for whatever, there was maybe, it was not so organized, but it's, it had a beautiful activity, but at the same time, it became an insalubrious space since uh, the, the, the floor conditions were not right. People would throw garbage to the, uh, to the streets. Uh, the light conditions were not right. So it was not a secure place, even at night. So somehow it ended up becoming some insalubrious space. Then way later on uh, in the 20th and 19th century, we started to think streets as an infrastructure. So we had many things to ask a street to solve, apart from water connections, electrical equipment, whatever. We gave it space and widened it up so it was better for salubrious conditions. But then we ended up um, filling it up with cars and with all the mobility uh, issues of a great city. And Again, no, we, we, we did some improvements, but then again, uh, we, we did some mistakes and somehow it became again a place full of, of, of noise and, and not so desirable. Nowadays, I think that we are going forward to a pacified street uh, solution or, or ideal where streets are not thought for the cars or for the mobility only but also for the citizen and the pedestrian. This uh, is an image of, of Paseo San Juan in Barcelona. I, uh, and you can see how the treatment of the ground that comes back to nature, but still uh, maintains a horizontal uh, plane, which is very important to, to be able to walk on it. But then you have benches, nature, and still on the right, there are cars and there is mobility, but it's, much more pacified and desirable space to connect with. So I think this is great for the buildings to start to open up again to this urban environment. As in the community um, relationship, 
Um, we mainly, it is, is a classical, it's not like we, of course, invented this, but, but we have this um, ground floor connection with the, with the city and the most bigger expression of it is in the patio of the building and how it connects to the exterior. This is a houseman courtyard from Paris uh, image where you can see how all the houses like look inside their own patio and they have this uh, common entrance. So everybody comes in through the same, through the same entrance and um, divides to their own private um, entrances to the houses. And this is space it's somehow in very, uh, it's used by the inhabitants and they take care of it and they put furniture in it and they really use it. So I think there's something to learn about this, about these spaces. Then the corridors, of course, we chose these Robin Hood Gardens image because maybe it's one of the uh, first uh, modern architects to get back to the, to the corridor idea that it could become a sociable uh, and, community, and community space. Um, and then finally, the rooftop, the conquer of the rooftop. It's also something that we believe uh, there's still a lot of work to do uh, in housing projects. This is our Walden image, uh, this building I'm sure everybody knows from Buffy. Uh, it had a, um, a lot of effort and, and design in these rooftops. Uh, to become used uh, by the community and, and they are actually rehabilitating it as, again to, it's a, you can see it on the right. But, mm -hmm. uh, and we believe that these kind of spaces have a lot to, to do, especially when the city becomes pacified. So the projects I'm going to show, uh, the first one is going to be Via Glorias because it has like the most urban impact. Uh, it's a project that we've done that has more urban impact on the city. And it has this double, this double uh, situation of trying to, to create this urban friction inside the plot, making this urban connection that's already begun through our plot and connecting to the Mercatas and Cannes entrance. So it has this urban condition that we decided that we would go through the building and then this community idea of preserving these two interior courtyards for the community and to have like nice space uh, for inside. This is about the, the, I'm gonna show some drawings where we try to work these interactions between the, the exterior perimeter and the interior, how we decide which are the points of connection where we're gonna access these patios. We want, we want to generate visual connections, but at the same time preserve this interior space for the community. So it's important how you place these entrances. Uh, are they accessible, accessible because we have slopes in the, in the city? And then how we conquer these, these rooftops. In these diagrams, uh, we had we did for the competition as well, we try to show these three levels, this urban connection, then community connection in the ground floor and in the corridors. And then finally, the, the, this rooftop, um, this rooftop compass as well. In this project, it's important I didn't explain properly that we designed the urban uh, volumetry and then four teams of architecture are working actually now on the development of four pieces uh, inside this big block. So it's actually divided in one, two, three and four pieces. And uh, it was very important for us to design uh, a relationship in between them, this, even though they were going to be designed by different architects, but we wanted to force this connection uh, between the community. This was the, the whole render idea and concept uh, of these corridors that we decided to put on the south facades so that they got the best light, light conditions uh, in the building. And instead of becoming narrow corridors just to access your houses, we widen up these spaces in contact of kitchens so people could actually conquer these spaces with the furniture and use it as their, as the, as their exterior space of the house as well. This is an image of, this, of how we started to develop these four. So it's like a render made by four teams together. It's from, from some months ago already, but 
we, we are working on, on this part of the building. And then we have another team here, another one here, and then another one on the front of that as well. So you could have, you could see a little glimpse of how this mixture of projects is, is going on. The next concept is this, I'm gonna go through because I think it got already clear that this patio, terrace, um, rooftop connection and how these passerelles and how the way we design this connection will make these three spaces work or not work, will make them be used or be forgotten by the, by the user of the building. No? So that's why we're giving it a lot of importance on how do we design these connections uh, in the building. And this is a view of how we imagine these corridors and, and the patio connection. It was a long time competition. But... Then another situation that might happen is when we find the, the opportunity to relate the city with nature. This is something that happens in, in some plots. And we think it's, it's good to encourage that we really work on gather these two and, and relate them through the building because, um, well, it's like a great privilege to, to have this condition. And we really put a lot of effort in this project, for example, to find a way to adapt the building to the slope of the street on this rectilinear facade, but then to totally break the building to the, to the park so that we could have nature coming in and designing every entrance, all the entrances, so that they force this visual and literal connection uh, from the street to the, to the park. This is this, uh, the, this back facade I was talking about. And in here you can see, as I was telling, this visual connection in the ground floor plan uh, between the street facade and the park facade. So this little, like this hole here, this, this way of seeing lights on the other side, which seems, um, it's, it's something that we really, really worked on to accomplish. And I want to make emphasis on that. The next issue is the level connection issue. That's something that we might find as well in urban situations. And we just wanted to explain how sometimes if we have the chance to sue uh, a, a connection in section, so not only working in plan, but also in section, you can see how this red stair here that, we, that you can see in the first plan tries to solve the connection between the plaza uh, that gave facade to the building, but also connected through the interior patio and then to the other side of the street. So somehow this, this building, nobody asked it the need to do it, but if you put effort on making this connection, so making this, this sewing, we really believe that buildings become just better for the city and for, for its user. This is an image of this interior uh, common space. I'm gonna pass through because otherwise it will be too long. And finally, the last project I'm gonna show, it's, uh, it's uh, the Mass Now project we, we talked about before in this kitchen room uh, concept. Uh, this 69 social housing uh, building we are developing for Insol in Illa Central del Mas Nou. Um, here came, I think it's good to, to talk about the strategy of the position of the central nucleus of staircases. Because, uh, for example, in the first phase of this uh, competition, we had two nucleus separated. But then in the second phase, we could accomplish the one central nucleus part uh, with the objection, uh, with the idea of connecting this uh, level of the street, because again, we have three uh, connection level on this project. So we wanted to absorb this, this, this problem of the site and have it in the stomach and, and really resolve it inside the building as well. So really we have this street connection that connects directly to the patio level of the building, but where you will find uh, this, this uh, vertical connection that will guide you again to the plaza uh, besides using the urban connections. So we really wanted uh, the, the, the inhabitant of this building to be able to access the building from the plaza as well from the urban uh, central space. Uh, and finally, uh, there, there had to be this slope resolution 
for the next uh, area down here. So the whole building, it's, it's uh, developing these three different levels. And actually we have the, the car entrance on this back part as well. But not only the car, really, I don't know if in the, video, in the drawing you can see, but the whole building has emptied uh, the ground floor plan. So you can walk through it and go up to the plasma. So I think, um, and with this uh, drawing, you can see. And then this was the, the render uh, that we presented for the competition. This has changed already, I will show you. But uh, the importance of how this uh, facade responded to this, with this porch, to the change of level, and how, um, how it emptied here on the, on the corner to get this visual connection to the next level, level plan. And this was again the, the common space uh, image that we, were, that we worked on and these filter spaces that we've been talking about already. And finally, I'm showing just uh, a picture of the working progress uh, process that we are having in this building. Because you're gonna see here the real buildings that are already built in the site. This site was a, a very big plot that was occupied by, by una fabrica textil, no? Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that the, there was a private, a private project here that places six big buildings and this, this plata in the, in the middle uh, gave us the chance to, to change somehow even the, the colors of the facade to relate to this environment. So we changed our design. So we, I think that the building somehow stays better in this in this in this urban space so i think that's that's all we hope that thank you <laughs> that you enjoyed and finally to just to to finish we wanted to share with you this uh, this let's say short film we did with one of our clients from casa cruce uh, we had the chance to to do this little short film that shows the, the house and its inhabitant and we think it's like the premiere because we never showed it before yeah. but i think it's fun that you that you can see it so we hope you, you enjoy it This is Europe, the old Europe. And this, this is Bernadette Terrace. Despite being from a small coastal village in Catalonia, Bernat is convinced he's from a mining town in Lancashire, UK. Weird, right? This is the Modster's Den. 153 square meters of stylistic inconsistencies. Two worlds fighting to conquer each other. This is Mod. This is Catalan modernism. Mod. Modernism again. Mod. Modernism, mod, that's a weird mix. And that, that's just a very expensive penis. Both Bernat's apartment and his brain are divided in four parts. His greatest weaknesses. Brit music. Brit literature. Brit football. His first home goal for West Ham United. <laughs> and back came Zimmer. Schroeder! What a finish! And finally, Brit cuisine. Mmm, smells good. Wait, is that a pizza? Oh, British pizza. I guess it. This apartment really... This apartment... Are you going to pick that up? Thanks, mate. 
Well, as I was saying, in this apartment, oh, for fuck's sake, I, I think we're done here. Good luck, Gloss Mod. Good night, Europe. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for your lecture. Uh, it has been amazing. And also, uh, uh, this, this last film, I think, is also amazing. You hear me right now? Yeah, I think. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I have two questions, okay, because I think uh, now we're going to ask for the people to do questions or, co or comments, whatever. Uh, and I want to begin, okay, uh, this final part of your lecture, of your amazing lecture, about two things, okay, I have in fact two questions. Uh, one, in fact, is related about the kitchen, okay, right now there are many, many architects that they are working and we're thinking about uh, how is going to be the life or how is our lifestyle, how is, uh, how I live, uh, how we live and what's the, the necessities that we have, in fact, uh, in our homes, okay? So at the end, all this kind of, of rethinking about um, the dwellings and rethinking about the housing uh, is in the base of your, of your work, for sure. And uh, for instance, there are some architects, uh, I remember uh, Anna Pujane, for instance, that they were asking that to, to forget about the kitchen, maybe the kitchen is a piece that disappeared, and I like that you uh, are reclaiming like the center part of the kitchen because the kitchen is a is a, like a, a main part of, of of the house. And what do you think about this question about the kitchen? The kitchen, yes. Kitchen, no. Kitchen is the the central part of, of our lives because, uh, in fact, the evolution of the kitchen is one of the of the of the most important parts in the evolution of the housing. Okay, uh, and maybe in in in. in some countries uh, they don't they don't use it, but I think in the Marit in the Mediterranean we use a lot, and it's also this part of, of uh, is a part of our life and is a part of, of socialization, no? In in the families and with friends, you know, you meet in the kitchen and please, oh, can I help you? Yes, do this, this, this. So, what do you think about this evolution about the kitchen and if the kitchen can disappear or not or you think are becoming more the central part of, of the life? Wow, yeah, it's a good question. Um, actually, I think um, it depends uh, a lot of uh, who, is, who is using the, the, the apartment. I think it could be removed if, for example, you have a common kitchen in, in social housings, and but you will always have uh, an area where you would make a tea or a private space inside the house. So maybe you could have a bigger kitchen where you could use in a, in a common space. But I think it, you will never lose the, the area where you would have your own staff and your own place to, to, to gather. And even though, even if you live alone or even if you're not in a big family, I think it will keep. It's, it's something very Mediterranean, no? To, to cook, and it doesn't mean you're the best cook and, or you cook all the time. If you have a, a kitchen in the center of the house, it, it, it's another, an extra room. Of course, it can lose some, some you know, uh, households. Maybe you don't have all the uh, super big uh, ovens because you have it uh, downstairs. Maybe, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's something. Yeah, and also I think that with, when we ask the question, uh, kitchen room, a room to cook, we are asking ourselves as well, is it just a room to cook? Uh, we believe it became somehow a place to, to gather, like you were saying, or we are asking more and more things to this space. So maybe one of the things you're doing there is to cook, but it's not the main activity. Yeah, not the only one. Exactly. No. Actually, now that we all found ourselves uh, locked down for months mm -hmm. in our places, 
how many of us, for example, I've been working on my kitchen because where, that's where I had my biggest table and I've been working there for four months. Who would believe that I would have a working meeting in my kitchen? Since I have light and I have a great, uh, a great table there, I, well, it's not great, but for my apartment, which is quite small, I mean, it's the greatest one I have. So that's what we were saying. We're asking more things to this space. And somehow that's why it deserves this centrality for us. So it's not only about cooking. Thank you. And the second that I want to ask you is about aggregation, okay? Because I think uh, that in fact, in your, in your first projects uh, that we have seen, you were working more in a, in a more traditional modules, okay, uh, to, uh, to do the aggregation, um, more or less like, like in the same scheme of Marta Peris or some uh, Toral, no? Peris Toral, that they are working with these squared modules that they add and they slice, etc. But it seems that there is a kind of evolution that you are like uh, jumping, okay, and, and, and you are like forgetting these straight modules, uh, squares, etc. And you begin to explore like different shapes, no? Not uh, hexagonals, uh, square, um, squares, but uh, twisted. And, and you are like uh, exploring like new ways of, of aggregation and new ways of, uh, of, of uh, units, no? And what I mean is, uh, for instance, um, in, in Japan, no? Um, the, the work of Nishizawa and, and, and Ryo Nishizawa and, and Kazuyo Sejima no? is also working in some, in some examples like Keda Apartments and Nishizawa, uh, they begin to work uh, with aggregation system, but uh, with no one unit. So the units at the end is like, uh, like the mixture of different directions from the environment and at the end they forget about the units. You think you will in the future go for, uh, or what do you think about this this uh, evolution that you have made uh, from the beginning with these squared units, and uh, and what about to forget uh, and to begin to explore this kind of hexagons, but are not regular. So at the end, you are like creating like new waves of of of, uh, of connecting different modules. Okay, um, well, I, I, I want to say that it's not, it doesn't have to be a linear process. We, we came up with, with uh, you know, with this uh, cellular plan before we did the last competition of Ibabi, which was squared. Yeah. So we, we, we move, we change, we don't, we, we kind of go back and forth, no? Now we do cellular, then we move to multi-sided because we think it's, it's better than we... It depends on the project, it depends on the site, it depends on many, many things, okay. on what we are have on our minds sometimes. And yeah, I think it's interesting what you're saying about uh, not losing. forgetting about the units and, and losing these boundaries, no? That you, that this was something we, we started with our studio. It was, it was the beginning, no? In 2015, Ciclo Habitacional, it was like, okay, imagine some that you could no, now I don't need this extra room, so I don't want it. I, I just lose it and give it to my neighbor. It, it would be something very, very powerful to achieve. I think it's it's complicated, of course. You have to organize it very well, so so you can really you no know, increase or decrease, and, and so you can change the limits of the house depending on on, on what's the needs of, of the community. So you could probably you no know, agree. Okay, now the grandma they don't want. These two, I need them, so I'm gonna go upstairs and I will have a key and it would be my office. That would be amazing. I don't know if we yeah. we will get it, but I think I think the society he reclaims that, no? So in a way, we think we sh we should we should do it. We should probably get this. And somehow, if you if you design the floor tiles so that somehow that's possible, maybe it's not possible today, but it can be possible tomorrow. So. Uh, as, as Carlota was showing the other plan, where actually we did, did those black lines to show how the units were there, but we really planned with no yeah. units. We really planned with just yeah. mesh of rooms. Yeah. Yeah. So we really believe that this, this is going to go further. And even we see that some clients are interested in that, like, what I could change the boundaries of the housing units yeah, and exactly. plan, and you're like, really? Actually, it happens in Glorias because you, you can change the, the limit, 
But yeah. once yeah. they establish that limit, then that's very hard to move again. Yeah. But from one plan to the other, they have done it already because the, the plan allowed allowed it to happen. Yeah, yeah. or even if the if the necessities they change, no, if you have a project and then five years later, then the you know, the the public wants two bedroom apartments. Then it's, it's something very easy to change the project because you have already thought it as in that sum of rules. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I think it's really interesting. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions. Yes, Ana Miguel, Ana Miguel, ask, uh, ask uh, how to create these filter spaces without turning them into a useless random spaces that you add to an existing space that works. You don't hear me? I hear you some some... Yeah, because here we are under work, so uh, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I, I will try to repeat. Uh, Anna Miquel asks how to create these filter spaces without turning them into a useless or random spaces that you add to an existing space that works by itself. I feel it's hard to utilize them. Yeah, okay, that's why I think that's why we put this example actually where we are now talking on. Uh, and this is something also Societat Organica, this team that we work on with a lot, they also make, uh, they really talk about enlarging these spaces enough so that they can really hold an activity inside. Because otherwise, it happens maybe like in Echampla uh, galleries, which are beautiful. Long, uh, long spaces where you have this, you know, these two window system. They work properly thermically, but then it's really hard to occupy them sometimes because when they are too narrow, you end up uh, taking out one of the skins and then amplifying the interior space because you cannot really use that space. Although I, I must say I would do it because I, I really like those spaces, but I understand that if you can't use it and you have a need of surface you end up uh, losing that gallery. That what we're talking about is that enlarging these spaces enough, at least to hold on a table and a couple of chairs, um, anything enough to hold on um, an interior activity, we really believe then it makes that space to have sense. Because otherwise, like she's saying, they end up being like useless, beautiful spaces. Yeah, you, you kind of... Uh, you, you organize it as a filter space, but it's, there's always another, another, you know, another program associated to that space. So sometimes it's the, it's the orientation and, and where it's affected, but sometimes it's the, it's the, you know, the, the la cancela, we say, mm -hmm. and it's not only a, a, a hall, it's where you keep your bike, where you have the, the, you know, the laundry space. So it's always another, another, not only one program, it has many programs. So you 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 make sure you get used this space and you don't get no unused. Uh, there is another question. Okay, Karine Baxdarayan uh, says, "Thank you for the lecture. Very informative and interesting." The question in all five concepts that you talk about: uh, X rooms, kids rooms, perspective, etc. Uh, you show uh, an illusion in time. In some cases, we see that uh, we go back, like perspective or filters, then we go back to the vernacular architecture. Uh, about kids' room, uh, do you think that in the future we will go back again into a compact and servant space? Yeah, well, well no. more than going to the back, we try to explain that we take some things from the past that were done um, critically and then we take some things from new technologies that are great and are there to be used and to improve. And then we kind of mix them up and get them to the to the to nowadays to use them properly. No, I think that's mm -hmm. something that it's true that we, we keep we kept on having that idea of the past, you know, and then coming back. But somehow we, we are summing up, we're not just refusing to to technology or what, what's been done uh, earlier. And what about? Yeah, I think I think it's like kitchen volverá. Yeah, I think it's it's hard to say. I don't think it will go back to the to the servant space as as itself. I mean, nobody wants to be locked there, only cooking all the time, without any any other no connection with the with the rest of the of the house. 
So of course, it, it, it is a function that it's 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 itself it's cooking, but it, as we say, no, it's other options, other functions, other things will happen there. So it won't be only you know a, a server space. I, I don't think maybe there is the evolution to the furniture piece. That's something that we also talked about mm -hmm. somehow. That maybe it's just a furniture piece that is placed somewhere in the house where you have a nice space to use. So it can become like the smallest maybe um, no expression of, of a kitchen, but then it's more this piece that will conquer any space where you put it. And, and you, like Carlota was saying, you don't lock yourself down in any uh, space with no light, no natural connection and, and no connection with the rest of it. I think that that would not happen. Mm -hmm. There is not more questions. I, I want to ask you something. Okay, one. Well, sorry, there is one more question. Uh, the projects are really good and the video really funny. I was wondering how does the studio of six equal partners works? That's a question with therapy. Maybe they will ask you about this. <laughs> um, uh, well, we don't have a, a boss, no? So we are six uh, partners. We work very horizontally. Um, I think it's something no, maybe not that usual, but I think we will see it more and more often now. Mm -hmm. um, we usually work uh, in pairs, so one person no, keeps the, the project, no, the, the, the follow of the project, the follow up, and then it also has a partner to, to share. But the main thing is that we, we always do uh, these workshops where all of the six, they, we talk about it, we improve it, we criticize, okay, this I don't see in, in all of the projects. In competitions, of course, because it's the main, no, where we are all the six um, making opinions. We maybe produce some of them not together, some of them in separate, but but it's important the opinion and that's why we 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 are called not theatre studio, it's, it's a sum of, of, of different views and that's why it makes it very special and that's why our main, no, our main point. Hmm. It's also um, it's a richness. It's a richness. Of course, of course. And uh, we've learned a lot about organizing ourselves, uh, both in terms of uh, how do we project together and how do we create uh, together, and, 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 and also and a business. Exactly. <laughs> also, how you how do you run a business and how do you run like. The company because in the end you have suddenly it's something that i think it's a shame that they don't really teach any of this in in universities because i really think most architects or a lot of architects end up having their own their own run they run their own studio or for other studios it doesn't mind because we all know that architects can do way more than just working in an architecture studio but still i think that this connection with um, so, you know, with the, the, see, we didn't we didn't have any idea. Now we we know a bit more. We used a lot of Barcelona Activa uh, programs to get some formation about how to run uh, how to run the. I keep saying company, but it's weird. It's not. We say you know, see the studio, and we also uh, I think it's interesting maybe for you. Uh, we also had to um, organize. Um, Besides architecture, we need to do many other things. And that's something you end up learning later on, but there's like accountability and uh, taking care of numbers. Then you have uh, communication. communication. Uh, we, have, we have like, we have made departments. departments, we call them departments because we ended up uh, learning, learning that we had to take care of all those if we wanted the studio to run properly and to live. Uh, from it, because as you were saying, uh, this this is also our work beside our passion, and and it has been uh, something really like a really interesting process, and it requires a lot of talking, a lot of talking, and like we really spend many hours for in the week uh, together. So not only do we eat together, which is something yeah. to have just fun together, but long meetings like she was saying we have like organizing meetings and then we have these workshop meetings where we project all together and make the theater studio what it is so 
Another question about uh, your, your works. Carlotta Mestre asks, thank you for the lecture, was wondering, out of curiosity, how did you place the central piece of furniture in Casa Cruce that is embedded on the walls? Uh, what, would, what would be the reason to place it there? Uh, was it to promote connection between the rooms? The piece of furniture that is, is just in, in, in Casa Cruce. Yeah. Why is over there exactly in this place and why is is, connect, uh, is embedded in, in the walls, okay? It was uh, in order to promote connection between rooms? Yeah, it, it, it was in the, in, the, no, in the corner, they share in the cross, Casa Cruce, in the cross, in the junction between these four rooms, we place this, this, this furniture that yeah, in a way connected that you can see from each room and you you know you are in one room, but you also know you are in a in a in a whole room which are, have the same no? the same configurations in a, in a way. Many things happen to this building furniture piece during the process. Sometimes it had had like the cooking area was there, but then I mean we, we did many changes. It was like a taller furniture, but then in the end this this low, just very simple, low horizontal yeah, uh, right. surface mm -hmm. is enough to hold things that, uh, for example, sometimes they have the TV on the on the uh, living side, and sometimes they move it to the other side. And I found they put uh, uh, flowers. They the part that is connected to the kitchen sometimes uh, they full also keep full of exactly mm -hmm. full of cooking books. So it's something that is one of those things that when you do it, you don't really know what's their use is going to be. And then it's the one who gathers like most, I don't know, most like attention. The, attention. It's, yeah. it's probably and they really yeah. love it now, but the, the clients were really close friends and actually family of Yvette, one of the associates. Um, she, they really told us like, now we get it, you know, now we're using it and we understand how powerful it is. And it's very simple, but there is another question. Uh, Mariana Merhek uh, says, I have a question. Does the strong concept of geometry come first or is it a result of a process of analysis? I, um, I think it, it, it doesn't come first or before. It's, it's kind of parallel in a way. No? We start with geometry, but we always not have this, 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 all these concepts in mind of how this, not how the housing should be and how are these connections. So actually geometry is more like a tool no? to find, mm -hmm. to, to, to explore the, the, all these concepts we have in our mind and to, 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 to show it, no? to, to show to other people, like this is, this is what we think it can be, it can be done. It's not like we say, let's do a cellular plan for this competition. No, <laughs> no, it's, it's more about the site, of exactly course. how, if it, depending on the geometry of the building, you will find some strategies are, are better. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also very common that we, we dig in the house very deep and we really work on this housing unit. And then we start to, to, to gather it together and we keep cha making changes from the outside to the inside and from the inside to the outside. Yeah, That's very important for us. It's the way around housing, all the time. Housing unit has, has its, its right to build and to, and to make interaction to the outside as well. It's not only that we come out from the urbanism and then we end up developing the housing unit, but that's why Carlota was showing you uh, a lot of times from the housing unit because we really, uh, it's one of the origins of our work. So. Okay, so uh, that's all. Thank you very much. I give uh, the words to Laia Vives and Juan Vera. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure to listen to you and, and of course, to learn about your work. So thank you very much to share your time with us. And, uh, and also, I think it's going to be really helpful for our students. We so, try to Hope to see you again uh, early, soon, okay? So, uh, and in, in better conditions, no, not in one screen. Okay, so Laia, uh, sí. thank you very much. Sí. Bueno, primero de todo, gracias de verdad por esta conferencia. Ha sido muy interesante. Yo creo que aparte, en cuanto a nuestro campus unit, ha venido de forma perfecta, porque son todos los temas que estamos tocando. 
Y claro, a mí me quer quería como felicitaros primero por, por, por la reflexión, cómo, los, cómo lo habéis enfocado, ha sido todo de una forma muy clara y para los estudiantes. Pero yo quería dar mucha énfasis al espacio público o el espacio comunitario, ¿no? Que en vuestros proyectos, o sea, explicáis mucho la casa y creo que también es muy potente el espacio comunitario, ¿no? De vuestros proyectos. Y creo que está muy bien explicado, sobre todo en sección, cómo vais creando ¿no? estos niveles de privacidad diferente ¿no? a medida que vais subiendo en el edificio. Y cómo me gustaría que esta idea de, 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 de salas ¿no? pudieran ser externas a estas viviendas y pudieras alquilarlo para un año, dos años y tener ahí tu estudio, o cómo nos hubiera gustado tener este espacio externo a la casa en momentos actuales como los de ahora del coronavirus, ¿no? Y que te pone a, pones a reflexionar sobre el futuro y hasta decir hasta qué punto la casa tiene que ser el elemento mínimo y en cambio externalizar como con estas células, ¿no? Pero al mismo tiempo relacionarse. Bueno, son temas que creo que tienen, como habéis dicho, un filón y, una, y, y tenemos que, que profundizar sobre ello y sobre las nuevas formas de, de vivir y que creo que lo habéis enfocado de forma exquisita, ¿no? Eh, por un perdón. lado, felicitar, ¿eh? Ni Pedro, Pedro. Una, no, there is one last question and I don't want to, to, <risa> to keep any student without a, an answer. Usually I'll ask many of the X rooms projects are dwellings that have their own kitchen. In Habitación del Mitch, what do you propose instead for the dining area if you have not kitchen? What do you propose if you lose the kitchen no, and you have anything yeah. extra? So, yeah, you would have an extra room. It could be a studio. It's important how it's connected, no? Since it's connected to the entrance, then it could be this satellite room that he was, that she was, no, Lara was talking about. This, this maybe extra room, maybe you don't need it, but you have it. It's maybe you, no, configure the, the size. Maybe it's not that big as a, as a kitchen. Maybe it's a, I don't know, you should, you should explore, no? Depends on the top of the program you need. Maybe in that project, it doesn't happen as much, but I'm connecting also with what Laia was saying now that um, this idea of satellite rooms, it's something that we also work on, but we decided that it would be too long for, to talk about, but uh, sometimes we provoke, it happens in Gloria's project, for example, and that no, in, well. in Masno as well, that we have a double entrance to the house at some point, which gives um, one of the rooms the ability to be separated from the rest of the house, which can fully connect as well. So if you look at the plan of, it happens actually in the, those, the boat that we are yeah, yeah. building in Gloria San in Masno, that this piece that has a double connection can make one of the rooms to be a satellite. So you really could even imagine you need uh, to, sh um, to reduce your house because you don't need as much space and then you need help with uh, uh, economical help with the, to pay the rent, then you could easily um, uh, um, rent, to rent. Yeah. these rooms, which is fully accessible from the corridor, and you could just rent it to somebody else or use it as a studio with a different entrance so you don't keep your house entrance with your studio entrance. So we really, uh, this is a very interesting question because uh, this is something we've worked on uh, a lot as well. So I think this double entrance is a good strategy, for example to make this double possibility. Okay, so now, yes, all the, all the questions are finished. Thank you very much again. And hope to, hope to see you all soon, okay? Thank you very much for your time, for your lecture, for your knowledge, and to share with us uh, your projects and, and, and your buildings, of, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gracias, <laughs> gracias por todo. Muchas gracias, no pasan muy bien. Me da pena no See you soon.